Okay, we're going to talk about writing equations of a line. The first thing that we want to talk about are the formulas that are associated with writing equations of a line. The first formula that we have is slope. So that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus, oh my, try that again, x2 minus x1. So y's over the x's. Now same thing applies here as what we had talked about previously with our distance formula. Anytime you have a point, it does not matter which point comes first as long as you line them up. Whichever point you decide to use first, and I know this formula is y2 minus y1, but I read left to right. So whenever I read my points, I always start with my left point first and then go to my right point. And so we're going to find some slopes, but the thing I want to make sure you know is slope formula is the y's over the x's, which also makes rise over run, so you know it's y over x. The next form that we're going to look at is slope-intercept form. We've already used this to graph, and keep in mind, mathematicians aren't creative, so in whatever it's called, that's what you get. So we already know the m stands for the slope. And the B in this instance stands for your Y-intercept. Wow, that looks terrible. Let me try that again. So your B is your Y-intercept. And so if you're ever given a Y-intercept, bam, it goes right in place of the B. Given a slope, that's where it goes. The next form we're going to talk about is point-slope form. And again, it's exactly what you think. The M is still your slope. But the difference here is I have this y1 and this x1, which is what makes up my point. So I have a slope and a point that we're looking at. The plane x here and the plane y without any subscripts on it, those are just part of my formula. Just like this y and this x are part of my formula, you don't sub anything in for those. So those are standard and then they work with it. Your point slope form is really just a workhorse. You don't leave your final answer in point slope form. You just use it to get to your answer. You're going to use point slope form to end up in slope intercept or in this next equation. Last but certainly not least is standard form. And standard form is also an end game. So you end up in standard form. The same concept applies with standard form as the other two. This x and this y are just part of your formula. The a, the b, and the c, however, are numbers. And they are not just numbers. There's a couple criteria whenever you end this up in standard form. The first criteria is that a is positive. So the coefficient of your x value always needs to be positive. Secondly, there are no fractions. So it's obvious in my formula the x and the y are on one side, but the two things that you need to, to make sure are in your final answer is that a is positive and that you have no fractions in your problem. Now keep in mind, typically slope comes in fractions. So you're going to have to eliminate those fractions for those problems. Okay, we're going to write the equation of the line through these two points. Now, these, the way that points are described in this aspect has a tendency to throw people off. Keep in mind the x-intercept is actually the point negative 6, 0. And the y-intercept is actually the point 0, 7. So anytime you go to write an equation of a line, you always have to start with the slope. The two main ways you're looking at it is slope-intercept form and point-slope form. They both have a slope involved, so start with that. You know you have m is equal to, subtract the y's, and remember I like to start with the left to the right, so I'm going to take 0 minus 7 over, and then the x's, negative 6 minus 0. So I end up with a negative 7 over negative 6. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So my slope for this line is 7 6. Then I go to my workhorse. I'm going to use point slope form when I do this. However, do I really need to go through all of that work? No is that answer. Because before I get started and start doing a whole bunch of work, 
If I want to write a slope intercept form, I already have the y intercept. So I get y is equal to a 7 sixth x plus 7. If you're given the y intercept, don't do all that extra work. Just put that value in there. You know that's your y intercept. So this is sl slope intercept form. What if I also want to write this same equation in standard form? Remember, in standard form, the x and the y are on the same side, and you can't have any fractions. So you convert from slope-intercept form, and then you work with your slope-intercept form to put it in standard. So you want to get your x's and y's on the same side. So I have a negative 7 sixth x plus y equals 7. Now remember there are two criteria. The first one is your coefficient of your x has to be positive. It's currently negative. We need to take care of that. And you can't have any fractions. So in order to eliminate this problem from fractions, we have to multiply with a common denominator. My common denominator here, 6. And because I need to change the sign, I'm going to multiply through by a negative 6. So now the 6's go, and I end up with a positive 7x. Negative 6 times y is a negative 6y. And negative 6 times 7 is a negative 42. So if you're looking at this problem, you end up with standard form. So you can either have slope-intercept form or standard form as your final answer. Good. Let's try one more. Okay, for this one, we are going to write an equation of a line in standard form. Now I have two points again. If you're given a point and a slope, then go with that. I am doing problems that I'm given two points because I want to show you the full process of how to get there and not just a piece of it. If you're given a slope, don't find it. If you're not given a slope, find it. So here we go. The first thing I need to do is find my slope. Again, I like to go from left to right. So I have 3 minus 4 over a negative 2 minus 6. Negative 1 over negative 8 is a positive 1 8. And that is my slope. Now, I don't have a y-intercept in this problem, so we're actually going to have to do work. It is your choice which point you want to use. You can use the first one or the second one. Now, the first one is nice because it has smaller numbers, however, there is a negative sign involved. The second one is nice because it doesn't have any negative numbers at all, so a lot of times your negative sign is your nemesis. Just go with whichever one you want. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the first one in this problem just simply because it's first. So here we go. I have a y minus 3, because that's the y value, is equal to my 1 eighth of x minus a negative 2, which will be plus 2. So now I am incorporating my point slope form, because remember that's our workhorse. You put it into point slope form and then you finish your off with whatever it's asking for. And in this problem, I'm going to finish it off in standard form. Okay, so do work. You can either eliminate the fractions now or just work with them. And I, I mean, I don't see the big deal in work with them, so go ahead and do that. So I have y minus 3 is equal to a 1 eighth x plus I have 2 eighths there. And so that's going to give me a 1 fourth when you reduce your fraction. Now, in standard form, I want to get my numbers together and my x's and my y's together. So in this problem I am now going to add 3 to both sides so I can get my numbers together. So that leaves me with a y is equal to a 1 8th x. Now in order to add the 3 over 1 with my 4 I need a common denominator of 4. So if I multiply the bottom by 4 I also have to multiply the top by 4 giving me a 12 fourths. So this is going to give me actually a positive 13 fourths whenever you go through and my four was looking wonky. When you go through and you add your numerator. So get a common denominator, then add your numerator. 
Okay, now this is standard form that we want, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract my 1 8 x from both sides, and this is going to give me a negative 1 8 x plus y is equal to a 13 fourths. Now, is that something that we can have? No, we have two things wrong with this. First of all, the negative is a problem in front of my x coefficient and the fact that we have a couple of fractions here, that's not gonna stir the Kool-Aid either there, Ace. So we need to find a common denominator. And remember, a common denominator is always the biggest number or bigger. I need to have a negative to get rid of that negative sign and an eight. So when you distribute a negative eight to each term, the eight on top cancels out the eight on the bottom and I'm just left with an x. A negative 8 times y is a negative 8y. And 4 goes into 8 2 times, so I'm really multiplying my 13 by a negative 2. So my final answer in standard form is x, x minus 8y equals a negative 26. Good. If my question asked me to leave this in... Um, get different color here. If it asked me to leave it in slope intercept form, then that would be my answer. But it asks me to leave it in standard form, and so x minus 8y equals negative 26 is standard. Good. The last thing we're going to look at real quick is parallel and perpendicular lines. If I have parallel lines, then I have the same slope. So whatever line, so let's say I have a slope of 2 thirds, that is parallel, and two slant lines is a symbol for parallel. That is parallel to a slope of two-thirds. So it's the exact same slope. If you have perpendicular lines, those slopes are opposite reciprocal. Opposite meaning positive and negative, reciprocal meaning a flip. So my opposite is positive to negative, so you flip that, or you change your sign, and then reciprocal means flip. So if you have a slope of two-thirds, perpendicular, which is an upside-down capital T, has a slope of negative three-halves. The opposite happens because your original one was positive, the perpendicular one is negative. It's 2 over 3, so I have 3 over 2. One more that I want to show you here is if you start with a slope of 2, or let's say negative 2 even, that is perpendicular to a slope of, if I have negative, you want positive, 1 half. That's right, because this 2 is the same thing over 1, so when you flip that, you get 1 half. Good. So when you have parallel and perpendicular lines and you want to write the equation, come up with the slope first, find your slope, and then go into point-slope form. Awesome. You can do this.